How are we doing? Is it okay? Testing, one, two, or three, okay. Uh, we're in the barn here again. Anyway, every time that I want to talk about something special, this is where I come. Okay, now, I was in St. John last night. Whew. I had to, I had to. Thank God I got these. Holy mackerel. Gotta take another one. How do these people breathe in St. John? I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you on that. That will be another story for another day. So we went at the meeting at Trans-Canada Pipeline last night. They had an open house, you know, to greet the public, to educate the public that, you know, we are good people. We're good members of the co community. We will help. Let me show you. Come over. Come over. So last night was a little bit tense. I did a rant outside, but there was too many distraction and the cops and everything. Anyway, I reflected overnight, and you know what? Canadians, not only New Brunswickers, Canadians, we have to wake up. Last night, me, and now it's no secret, me and Mark Darcy, an, uh, an activist for the environment from Fredericton, we went down the same job. I had my blogger jacket on, Darcy looked like a lawyer, necktie, suit, you know, I mean, we're just going there to see what's going on, ask questions. We walk in there, the minute I walked, there was two members of the St. John Police Force, uniform, guns and everything, and I'm sure there was a couple of undercover also. And I was greeted by the door, hi Charles, I thought, I, 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 I should have told, I should have told, uh, I felt like I, I should tell the police officer. Sit down. It's okay. Felt like I was important. First name, basic. But that's okay. So we, we really, they want us to talk to the, uh, of course, uh, they're doing their job. We had people at the, at the entrance, polite, hello, big smile, blah, blah, blah. Good public relations skill. So far, so good. Yeah. And next thing you know, we saw the sign, uh, media, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we'll get to that later. So we showed up. Let's go, go at a table. There's this booklet. And all maps. All maps. I love maps. I mean, when I rode my bicycle across the states, across Canada, I never got lost. I love maps. So anyway, next thing you know, just... And me and Mark were looking. And then, okay, where's the pipeline go through New Brunswick? Okay. Oh, the river. Then I look. Oh, hold it. It says page 50. We know where the pages are. One person said, pointed right in the middle. Oh, it was right, not at the bottom or the top. Right in the middle, page one, two, three. Okay, one page 50, we're looking. Next thing you know, I noticed legs were coming toward us. I look, I go, what? These are Trans-Canada employees. Black pants, gray shirt, and just... So me, I look around. And I said, uh -uh, this is not good. So then the one person says, you're not allowed to take videos, but you're allowed to take pictures. I said, really? Oh, okay, so I took one picture. And me and Mark continued to look at the map. Matt, uh, Mark took his camera, but we both had weapons, I mean cameras. You gotta protect yourself when you're in places like that. So it was just like mission in impossible style. <laughs> Taking pictures, next thing you know, they came around. They said, oh, you're not allowed to take pictures. No videos, no pictures. And I said, Mark said, well, I'm just taking pictures. You know, like, it's, you want to educate the public. Here's the map. They said, oh, no, no, no. So, so next thing you know, Mark said, I'm going to take a picture. Okay. Police, they escorted Mark out of there. So he left. He was forced to leave. So me, they were looking at me like another word. Okay, one troublemaker gone. Now we got the second one. And this is the conversation. I have an audio of the conversation. I don't go around and do audios really in secret. But when me and Mark were there, and you see all these legs coming, if something happens, they have about 10 witnesses, and we is only our words. This is time and emergency. I put my video camera on. It was on. And I met Maurice Rubichot. Now, a lot of people want to know who Maurice Rubichaud is. Maurice Rubichaud used to be the sidekick of Sean Graham. 
Maurice Le Bichot is the one that was in charge. He was, he was also the sidekick of Frank McKenna. Maurice Le Bichot is a very high-profile liberal in the Liberal Party. But Maurice Le Bichot, I never seen him around with Brian Gallant. A couple of times here and there, but behind the scene, there he is working for Trans Canada. Not a bad guy, but he has a job. Maybe that was his job to sell NB Power. Who knows? But his job now is Trans Canada. And we had a nice chat. I got the audio. We're chatting off France. Chatting, chatting away. I told Maurice Robichaud, get Darcy back in here. No, no, no. You could go around. You could ask all kinds of questions. I said, I'm not educated, like 95 of the majority of people in St. John, or Fredericton, or New Brunswick, don't know what's going on. It's like I said before, you talk about the justice system, yeah, me, me, me. They don't understand until it affects you. So you have a guy that educated himself to do uh, to, about the environment, and next thing you know, he's out there. They won't allow him, him in. So I fought with them, I said, Get him the hell back inside. Nope. He said, once we escort him out, it's hard to bring him in. So I said, okay, listen, you have your little party there. 32, it was 30, 35 people dressed in gray. Have your little party for one night. But I tell you, Maurice, when I get, when I see Frank, uh, Frank McKenna, here we go, uh, Sean Graham, uh, Brian Gala, sorry, Denis Laudry, and Brian Gala, I'm going I'm going to go after them. I'm going to tell them what happened here. Ooh, no, no. Like, if I was in St. John, okay, it cost $2,000 an invitation to kiss the royal finger of the Godfather. I mean, uh, the premier or the minister. I'm in Fredericton. They should know that. But we will ask the Nilaudri and Brian Galat what happened there. Now, I'm sorry about the long-winded video. I hope you didn't fall asleep because this is very, very important. Canadians all across Canada must really open their eyes on Trans Canada. I mean, open your eyes. And plus, I was there and I was approached by another Francais. And I said, Pas Francais? Je te dis, Quebec. Ah, oh, un maudit Québécois. Qui s'appelle un maudit Québécois? The guy was. I said to myself, uh, uh, we got problems here. And this guy at this Quebecois, Felix, Felix, his, na his name. And you go on my blog, go to Google, write Charles LeBlanc. I'll put all the audios, everything on my blog in the next few days. Felix told me, hey, let's step outside. You know, we'll see what you could do. Is that the public relation that Trans, <laughs> Trans Canada Pipeline has to bring people outside that ask questions? And, I mean, that's mafia! Anyway, so, I'm sorry, I'm getting out of hand here. An open house, if it should be open, it's called openness. Openness to the public. To have anything, videos, cameras, tape pictures. When we started taking pictures, they should have said, oh, what's the problem? This guy arrived. This computer, the, oh, the maps are on our website. Oh well, my God, I just seen their maps. It's not the same. We'll do another video on that. But the video, the maps are not the same. They are misleading the public on their website, on the pipeline routes and near the rivers. And one of the biggest salmon rivers in around the world is going to be right close to it. But anyway, we'll get to that after. But they wouldn't allow us to take pictures. They should have said, go ahead, take pictures. Share it to the public. There's nothing to worry about. We are good standing members of the community. Anyway, that's not what happened in St. John last night. It was terrible. It was disgusting. See, oh, see, the union was outside. I'm a former union man myself. They asked me inside if I wanted some cookies or whatever, but I did end up taking a bottle of water, good trans Canada water, yeah, because my throat hurt, like it's hurting right now. Anyway, uh, the union was outside, and uh, I've seen these guys for a long time. I realize I'm getting old, 
five or six, eight of my friends are dead. I didn't even know. I used to work with at, at the shipyard. Life goes by. So, the bottom line of this video, Trans Canada is not open to open discussion to true, open, good, educated discussion of what's going on here. We're talking about our river to be in great, great dangers, our land, everything a leak. Oh, we're so, 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 so sorry. If you complain, they might send these Quebecois to punch you out. Who knows? I don't know. I'm sorry. I apologize. Moody Quebecois and punch you out. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit tired. But the bottom line here, Trans Canada, Canadians don't allow Trans Canada to build this pipeline across your province. Because if they treat a spill or the project or something goes wrong, at the same way we were treated last night, you know what? We are in great, great, great danger. And I'm telling you, it's scary. Go to Google, write my name, Charles LeBlanc, and you will see the videos, what we made, and the pictures, and we must educate the country. See, notice I never said the province. We must educate the country on this scary, scary process that these billionaires are going through.